Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. This is Amanullah. You are watching my YouTube channel, Dr. Aman's video. Dear viewer, today we will discuss anti-nuclear antibody testing. In this short video lecture, I would try to address the most important question about anti-nuclear antibody testing. First question, what is anti-nuclear antibodies? Number two, what are the type of anti-nuclear antibodies? Number three, what is the significance of testing anti-nuclear antibody in the diagnosis of autoimmune diseases. Finally, we will discuss that what are the goal, what is the gold standard method used for the testing of autoimmune, uh, sorry, anti-nuclear antibody testing. Now, what is anti-nuclear antibody? Anti-nuclear antibody is not a single body. It is a group of autoantibodies which are specific or produced against the different material or component present inside the nucleus of the cell. These component or material include DNA, RNA, protein or protein nucleic acid complexes. So anti-nuclear antibodies are different antibodies which are produced against the DNA, RNA, protein or DNA, RNA, protein complexes present inside the nucleus of the cell. Now the question is what do we mean by autoantibodies? Autoantibodies are those antibodies which are produced by the immune system of an individual against their own antigen and these autoantibody take on the self antigen of that individual and result in the immunopathogenesis. Now, how many types of anti-nuclear antibody? So the answer is there are two types of anti-nuclear antibodies or you can say that all anti-nuclear antibodies can be divided into two groups. One that are produced against DNA or histone protein. So the most common anti-nuclear antibody produced against DNA is anti-double standard DNA antibodies and against histone that is anti-histone antibodies. So this is one category. The other category include anti-nuclear antibodies which are produced other nuclear antigens like anti-Smith antibodies. Smith antigen is a protein antigen which is present inside the nucleus of a cell or anti-centromere antibodies or there are other nuclear antigen like RO antigen, LA antigen, LB antigen, SSB antigen, SSA antigen. So there is a large list of other nuclear antigens against which we can have anti-nuclear antibodies. Now we will discuss the importance of the identification of anti-nuclear antibodies in the diagnosis of autoimmune diseases. So the identification of anti-nuclear antibodies provide a foundation for the diagnosis of autoimmune diseases. But more specifically, you can say that the identification of anti-nuclear antibody provide foundation for the diagnosis of connective tissue autoimmune diseases or autoimmune disorder. Connective tissue autoimmune diseases is a group of diseases, is a group of autoimmune diseases which include systemic lupus erythromatosis, scleroderma, rheumatoid arthritis, poly myositis and there are other autoimmune diseases including in this group. These are the diseases which primarily affect bone, joints or other organs which are usually supported by connective tissue like liver, lungs, heart, brain or any other organ of the body which are strongly supported by the connective tissue of the body. Now, as I told you that it provide foundation to the diagnosis of autoimmune diseases, but 
you must be clear that anti-nuclear antibody is not a specific test, it is a screening test which assists in the diagnosis of autoimmune diseases because they are 20 to 30 percent of the population carry or can produce anti-nuclear antibodies which can be detected in their serum otherwise they will be normal. So therefore, there are other factors which should be take into consideration while making diagnosis for a person to be suffer into a connective tissue autoimmune disease or disorder. Now, testing methods used for the anti-nuclear antibody. Conventionally, in 1948, there was a scientist, Herr Graves and his colleagues, they isolated a cell from the patient of systemic lupus erythromatosis and they incubate this cell with the serum of a person suspected for SLP or autoimmune diseases. So they incubate the serum of a suspected for autoimmune disorder with a cell isolated from a person suffering from systemic lupus erythromatosis. After incubation, they wash the fusion which remove all the unbounded particle or material and the antibodies or you can say more specifically the anti-nuclear antibody if present in the serum of this suspect will bind with the antigen present in this cell. So, after washing only bound antibodies will remain. Later on what they will do? They add a secondary antibody and that secondary antibody was labeled by a fluorochrome. Again I repeat they add a secondary antibody to this cell but that secondary antibody was labeled with fluorochrome and this secondary antibody was specific against the human antibody or human IgG and we know that IgG sorry human immunoglobulin and we know that antibodies are immunoglobulin in the nature. Again I repeat they add secondary label antibody and that secondary antibody was specific against the human antibody. So, if this serum contain the anti-nuclear anti antibodies then they have been bound with the antigen present in this cell. So, the secondary antibody will bind with this antigen antibody complex because that secondary antibody is specific to this human antibody. So, this secondary antibody will bind with this antigen antibody complex and it will tell us and then later on we will visualize this fluorescence against uh, under the fluorescent microscope and it will produce different fluorescence pattern and different fluorescence patterns correlate with different anti-nuclear antibodies. Therefore, after addition of the secondary antibody, we will visualize this fluorescence under the fluorescent microscope and then we report the different fluorescence pattern and different fluorescence pattern are correlated with different anti-nuclear antibody. But recently, not very recently, in 1975, this cell isolated from systemic lupus erythromatosis patient has been replaced by another cell which is known as HIP2. HIP2 is actually a human epithelial, uh, human epithelial carcinoma or human epithelial tumor cells. 
this is the cell which is now recommended by the American College of Rheumatology as a gold standard for the detection of anti-nuclear antibody in the serum of the patient. The procedure is similar but we use HIP2 cell instead of SLE cell. So this method is known as indirect immunofluorescent method or indirect immunofluorescent detection of the anti-nuclear antibodies which is used as a screening test for the diagnosis of autoimmune diseases. There are certain other methods which are used for the detection of a specific subtype of anti-nuclear antibody like ELISA or immunoblotting these are the technique which are further used for the detection of the subtype of anti-nuclear antibody because different subtype has more specificity or well correlate with different autoimmune diseases. Therefore, the further specific, specific identification of different anti-nuclear antibody has great importance in making diagnosis of the different diseases in the group of connective tissue autoimmune diseases. So I hope you would find this video very beneficial. I would like to request you for the subscription of my YouTube channel Dr. Aman's video. Try to hit bell icon in order to get notification for my upcoming video. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel. Fee Amanillah.